Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our F-15C Eagle and we're looking at air-to-air -air combat. Now air-to-air -air combat can be split into two categories. Beyond visual range, BVR, so that's any combat where the two combatants are outside 10 miles of each other. And within visual range, which is the opposite when targets are within 10 miles. This is also known as ACM. So today we're looking at BVR, long range combat. Now for this video I'm going to assume that you've already seen the video on the F-15 HUD and HUB symbology and on the F-15 radar. If not then both of those are in the F-15 tutorials playlist and this will make a lot more sense if you've seen those first. So first a quick look at the armament screen, let's bring that up. We can have long range missiles on pylons 1, 3, 4 and 5 and mirrored on this wing too. If we open up a list, air to air, we get the AIM-120 and the AIM-7. The AIM-7 Sparrow is a medium range air to air missile, semi-active homing radar missile. This means that it is a FOX-1 type missile, it does not have its own onboard radar. Instead it uses the mothership's onboard radar to guide it from release all the way until impact. The AIM-120 AMRAM is a FOX-3 type missile, a fully active radar homing missile. This means it has its own radar in the missile. So when we fire it, then it will travel initially from guidance from the mothership radar. Then at a predetermined point, it will switch to its own radar known as going pitbull and guide itself to the target. The AMRAM comes in two flavors, the B and C model. The B has larger winglets, the C has clipped winglets. I believe the reason for that is that the C was made smaller in diameter essentially to fit in the weapons bay of the F-22. As a result, the C is more aerodynamic and it has a couple more miles range where the B has bigger winglets and has more maneuverability. So neither is better than the other really, it's just whichever you prefer. Regards to the variant for the Sparrow, I don't actually know the difference between all these variants. Usually the later letter of the suffix means that it's more modern and they're therefore better so an E would be an older version and an M and an MH will be a newer version probably with better range and better avionics. Okay so we'll arm up with two M's and two C model AMRAMs. Request rearming. Copy. Okay well that's arming let's have a look at the controls we're going to be using today for, to fire the missiles we're going to be using weapon release to acquire a lock and to unlock a target we're going to be using target lock. To select our beyond visual range targeting mode, we're going to use that. To move our TDC target designated cursor around, we're going to use TDC up, left, down, right. To change weapon, we have weapon change. To zoom in and out of the radar. To zoom in and out of the radar display, we've got display zoom out, display zoom in. Change our PRF, our pulse repetition frequency, we have that there. To aim our radar antenna up, we have scan zone up. To lower it, we have scan zone down. To turn our pulse stop radar on, we have that. To toggle between RWS and TWS modes, we have radar modes, we have that. And that should do us for today, so we'll get airborne and look for a target. Okay, we're airborne now, so a quick look around our cockpit, things of interest here is where we can tell our weapons status. So we can see that we have an AIM-120C on that pylon there, an AIM-120C on that pylon there, my 7M there, my 7M air there, and the rest of the pylons are empty. So let's unpause, radar on, let's increase our scan zone, I'm not going to go into detail of how to get radar locks because this is all covered in the radar video. We can see that we have a target in front of us. So the first thing we're going to do is unpause. We're going to put ourselves into BVR mode. We're going to select our side, uh, our, sorry, our sparrow we'll use first. A quick look at the HUD before we've locked up. All of our usual HUD info. We've also got here, we've got us telling, we've got info to tell us that we've got an a AIM-7 mic selected. There are two of them. It's a missile, we've got a MAC, we've got our G, Nav info over here, otherwise no interest in terms of weapons, so we're going to unpause now and get a lock. Note that to get a lock with a sparrow, or to fire the sparrow at least, we have to get an STT lock, as you can see down here. We cannot get a track while scan lock. We can get a track while scan lock and fire when we're using the AMRAMs later on. So you can see that we ha have new symbology now. 
we have the target marked by this box there. You probably can't see this in this video, but there's a tiny dot in the middle of it, which is our target. Note that if it is an empty box like that, it is a hostile. If it has a cross through it, it is a friendly. We have our ASC aiming circle here, currently caged to our W here, our aircraft datum. We also have the display of the hostiles aspect. You can see this down tick here, this arrow heading down. This is telling us that the hostile is hot to us. He's heading towards us. If it was going up there, he would be heading away. If it was going out to the right, he would be heading left to right. We have our range scale here, currently set at 0 to 80 nautical miles. We can see that the carrot shows where his current range is. That's about mm, 25 miles, something like that. Our closing speed, so our combined speed in knots, is 639. We also have three guide ranging markers for this particular missile. We have R max, R lethal, and R minimum. So we can only fire the missile or fire the missile effectively once our ranging carrot gets below our maximum here. Our maximum is a guide to tell us when we can hit the target with our missile if we were to fire it, assuming that the target took no evasive action and all speeds and vectors remained constant. Our lethal down here is if we fire under our lethal marker here, or less range than our lethal, then we could fire, and even if he took evasive action, there is a good percentage chance he would be hit. And there's our minimum here. All missiles have a minimum range they can be fired at because they take a certain amount of time to travel away from our plane and to fuse. In addition, we've got a range here from us to the hostile 27.3. Uh, nautical miles we've got a predicted timer here where if we to fire now then it would take that many seconds to reach the hostile and the target's uh, aspect here we can tell that it's currently hot i.e heading towards us as you probably know a lot of this information is down here on the radar screen as well but again look for the radio the radar video to uh, understand all that properly okay so we'll unpause now we're going to need to get a lot closer because we need before we fire we need to get our range carrot here below our max so let's get our power on now we can artificially extend our max significantly by increasing our speed so as we increase our speed the range of our missile is going to increase significantly i forgot to talk about the range of these missiles very roughly the aim 7s have about the same range as the aim 120 amrams the range is completely dependent on the speed altitude and aspect of us and the speed altitude and aspect of the hostile assuming a good case scenario where we're both at optimal altitudes of about 20,000 hot and fast these missiles both have a range of approximately about 20 miles in a worst case scenario when we were down low the hostile was down low and we were chasing the hostile down to about four miles or just less than four miles you can see our ASE circle is growing now as we get closer to being able to fire The combined speed is increasing and the range is decreasing. We're about to get within range. We are now within range. We are now within our max, as you can see. We've got a triangle below the hostile target box here, which means that we have permission to fire. In addition, we have our fire cue lights up here and there, and we can fire. Now, to fire, we have to take into account our steering dot. That is our steering dot there, and it's very important. It's like the steering dot you get in the F-18C Hornet. Now the rule with the steering dot is when you fire, you want to have your path vector here, sorry, you want to have your aircraft datum here, the W, as close to that dot as you possibly can. This will add any necessary lead to the missile that it requires to fly efficiently. To be able to fire effectively, and that's the best case scenario, in reality all you need to do is have the dot here within the ASE circle, which is the one drawn out here. If you can get that dot within the ASE circle, you've got pretty decent efficiency. If you can get it right on the W and near the path vector here, then you've got a best case shot. So we'll take a best case shot here. Keep press and hold weapon release. Box one. We'll see that goes somewhere. There it is down there. We've got some timing information now. We can see that we now have one missile left. We're at Mach 1.2 and 15 seconds predicted until impact here. Now, these timings here and here are only guides. They assume that everything, you know, they assume that the hostile doesn't change trajectory. They assume, assume there's no wind and stuff like that. So they're only a guide for use. Like I said earlier, these are FOX-1 type missiles, so we're going to have to retain a lock on the hostile until impact. We can't turn away and lose the lock now. So we have to keep pointing at him, or at least at an aspect that allows our radar to pivot and keep a lock on him. So we might as well just watch the missile all the way. See if he's going to evade or not. Probably not. 
You can see that we're now within the R lethal marker, so we can fire now, and even if he were to take evasive maneuvers, there, there's little chance of him getting away. So let's take another pop at him. So we're going to get a best case uh, shot with our steering dot, and box one. Four miles away. Boom, and he just flew straight into it. Okay, so that's B basic BVR using the Fox One Aim 7 Sparrow. Now we're going to reset and do it again with the AMRAM. Radar on, BVR mode selected, AMRAMs. AMRAMs are currently selected. You can see that we've got AMRAM, two of them. It's the Charlie version. Everything remains the same. Right, so let's change the attributes of our scan, find the target, lock onto the target. Now, this time with the AMRAM we have an option of using an STT lock or a TWS, a track while scan lock. And just because we can, we'll use a track while scan lock in this case. Again, all of this is covered in our radar videos. So we've got a track while scan lock now. We're going to head in. Regards symbologies, everything's pretty much the same. We can see that we've got a lock with the missile because we've got an L here. We've got our range, we've got our time. Uh, this is not in time until impact time now. This is a time that if we were to fire the missile now, it's the time at which the pistol, missile will become pitbull, i.e. it would switch over to its own internal radar rather than time until impact. We've got our steering box, our, uh, our target box, our steering dot, our ASC circle, which is dotted rather than full. Regards the AMRAM, our vector, and everything else is the same. Again, when launching a missile, you want to be as fast as you can because you'll uh, increase the range of your missile significantly. You can see that RMAX growing marker growing there above 10 miles. Regards range, the same as the uh, Sparrow, more or less. 20 miles ideal and down to 4 miles worst case. I'm going to turn away on purpose just so I can show the steering dot better. Okay, we're in range. Our firing cue with an AMRAM is a star here rather than a triangle. We've got our lights up here telling us we're good to fire. Everything else is good to go. Our steering dot is here, is within the ASE circle, so we can fire and it will be a good shot. However, to make it a perfect shot, we're going to move our steering dot here uh, over our aircraft datum and path marker, path vector. And we're going to fire now. Hold and press, weapon release, it's a Fox 3. And we've got, if I can catch it, we've got a timer down here regarding the missile. This is not the time until impact again, this is the time until the missile will go pitbull and self-sufficient. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait until it goes pitbull, then we can turn away and run away, this is the benefit of the Fox 3, and we'll see that the missile still impacts. So, 7, 6... Two, one. Missile is pitbull. We're going to turn away now, and we're going to follow the missile so we can see that it's still going to guide itself onto impact. Shabumi. Right. So that is firing the AMRAM. The AMRAM can be fired with an SCT lock or a track wall scan lock, as we said. If we fire with a track wall scan lock, we can lock multiple targets on the uh, radar screen here we can lock up to I think eight targets at a time and fire at all eight targets. In fact why don't I go show that now. Okay we're airborne again we've now got eight AMRAMs so radar on increase the scan range and there's our eight lovely targets. BVR mode we can see we've got eight AMRAMs selected on the bottom left there increase speed turn to TWS mode wait until they're a little closer Let's lock one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, it appears we can only lock four at once. So be it. Power on. So that's fire. Fox three. Fox three. Fox three. Fox three. No, it looks like we had four locked. All right, let's see how those missiles do. Okay, that's four hostiles down. It's pretty cool. Shows the power of the TWS lock in combination with the AMRAM. 
Right, so that shows uh, using two different missiles in essentially three different modes. The only other thing I want to point out is... The only other thing I want to point out that I forgot to show in the radar video, let me reset quickly, is what would happen if the hostile were using ECM if they were jamming. Uh, this is a whole bunch of hostiles mixed in together, but as you probably know, a hostile shows up as a little left to right dash on the radar screen. Now, if the hostile was jamming, then rather be, than being a dash, there would be a whole series of little dash lines up and down, all the way up and down the scanner. It looks very confusing and disconcerting if you see it for the first time. That means the hostile is jamming your radar. In that case, then, the only bit of information we can get about the hostile is his azimuth, his direction. We can't get his range, his vector, his speed, his altitude, or anything else. Now, there are two things to say about this. First of all, once we get it within a certain range, known as the burn-through range, we can burn through his gemma, and then we will be, to be able to see him properly as a single dashed line normally. At that point, we could do all our normal stuff. We could ascertain his vital information. We could get a lock on him, and we could fire at him. Now, in most planes, we couldn't lock at him when we're, we're outside the burn range, burn through range, when he had the multiple dashes up and down the radar display here. In the F-15, we have a secret trick. We can actually fire at jamming targets. It's known as a HOJ, home on jam shot. Now, I can't show you here, to, here today because I couldn't get the hostiles to use their jammers. But if we did have a hostile that was jamming, we saw a whole ladder of up and of left to right lines all the way up and down the display here. We could actually lock onto that if we had an AMRAM selected and fire at it. Now, we wouldn't get any range information, so we wouldn't be able to make any predictions, but if you could ascertain his range, say, from an AWACS or some other method, you can fire at jamming targets. So it's just one thing to bear in mind. Other than that, that's all I want to show with BVR and the F-15. I hope that helps and see you later.